You hear so many rumors. People are here one day, gone the next. And no one has laid eyes on the emperor in months. Emeda, Dango, and the rest of the ruling council have taken to dispatching processions of imperial sky limos to maintain an illusion that the emperor still moves about in public. You know they commissioned an enormous statue of the emperor for the senate. I mean, imperial plaza? So far, the thing looks more terrifying than majestic. Isn't that the idea, Nils? Admiral Nils Tennant and Moff Wilhuff Tarkin discussed the imperialization of Coruscant existing government bodies were renamed to reflect the change in authority as civil and military superstructure of the old republic were overhauled immediately under the personal direction of the emperor. With vast portions of the galaxy still unconquered, the Grand Army of the Republic became the Imperial Army, while the Republic Navy became the Imperial Navy and the Galactic Senate was rechristened the Imperial Senate. The renowned Senate Plaza, with its name reminding residents of the Old Republic, was promptly changed to the Imperial Plaza, while an enormous statue of the Emperor was erected there. Ultimately, the mechanisms created for the Republic during the war were twisted to fit Sidious use, with even the systems built with help from the Jedi benefiting the new Emperor. In addition, the former roundel of the Republic was replaced with the new Imperial Crest, adorned on almost everything having to do with Sidious Empire. With every day that passed, Sidious' hold over the galaxy grew tighter. For the next decade and a half, Imperial rule, bolstered by the military created to fight in the Clone Wars, dominated the galaxy and was largely unchallenged. The Empire soon began to upgrade its military hardware, replacing V-Wing and ARC-170 fighters with newer TIE models five years after the Clone Wars, but Republic-era military equipment continued to be used for a while on distant outposts and locations such as Galadran Station. The Republic's Phase II clone trooper armor would begin a phase-out and be replaced by superior stormtrooper armor, whose development had been headed by the Imperial Department of Military Research.